3D Realistic Eyeball Gel Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing a relatively realistic 3D eyeball with some hard gel. And so I really enjoy doing this. I got a necklace that is packed away in a whole bunch of stuff and I was going to show you but I can't get to it. Um, but it's a necklace of just eyeballs that I got a little while ago that I think is really cool. And a couple years ago, probably three years ago, I planned on just doing a hand painted realistic eyeball design and I talked myself out of it because I thought it would be too odd because it wasn't a Halloween or anything, it was just me wanting to do an eyeball. So I don't know, I have reevaluated my squeamishness towards eyeballs and I have decided who cares and I'm going to be doing this design. So I hope you like it and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. So I'm going to begin with a thin overlay of some clear gel. So this is just because I knew that once I started working on the eye and the eyelids and everything like that on top of it, that they wouldn't be all of that thick. So I wanted just a layer of clear gel underneath it to provide some strength. So I just added a nice little layer of some builder gel underneath that, and then I'm going to cure that. And I'm not going to worry about filing it because it had a pretty good shape to start with. So now using some white builder gel, I'm going to go through and I'm going to sculpt the white of the eye. And so I'm sorry I'm off camera, but the first layer of gel I'm using is this really, really thick gel that I have that holds its shape incredibly well. So as you can see, it's not self-leveling even slightly. And so I'm just going to make sure that I've got it and it's going to be the right shape and just build up the center just a little bit to get that domed, that slight domed curvature of the eye that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to go through and try to flatten it out and smooth it out the best I can. After that's cured, I'm going to take a thinner gel that's actually a little bit brighter of a white and go through and just add a second layer over that, make sure it's really opaque. And that's just going to self-level and smooth that out and make it look a lot better, a lot smoother, prettier, all that good stuff. And then cure that again. So now I'm going to be taking some really light, almost like a dove gray, and I'm going to be adding a slight shadow all around the outside perimeter of the eye. So I'm just going to start just a little bit blending that out and then also along the bottom edge. So just take a little bit of gel at a time, build it up slowly, don't put a whole bunch on, and then have to try to maybe remove some. So just do a little bit by little bit and blend that out. And so just keep brushing it and brushing it and it should blend out relatively easy. That is the benefit of gel. It blends so beautifully. It is so nice. And I'm actually using that same color of, like I said, like a dove or a dolphin gray. And I'm going to be adding the first layer of the iris. So I'm just going to go through and add that first, just almost outlining it, just getting it down. Because if it's not quite perfect and it's just that really light gray color, it's not going to be that big of a deal if it is not exactly what you're going for and you can fix it easy. But then it did look pretty good. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to be really darkening up the outside edge of the iris. So just with, this is actually a color that I named eggplant. So it's a really, really dark purple. I'm going to just go around the outside edge of that and then I'm going to pull in. So I have that layer of gel. I'm just going to pull it towards the center of the eye. So just take little brush strokes and pull it in, which can be a little awkward angle wise a couple times, but for the most part, it's pretty easy. Just pull and pull and pull and pull and pull. And that's going to slightly blend it, but always pull it the same way, the same exact way. And then from the center of that little ring, pull that out. So pull from the outside in and from the inside out. So they try to like reach towards each other. So I'm going to be using some, some that's cured now. So I'm going to use aqua colored and some bright green gels. And I'm going to add just a little bit more color variations within the iris just here and there. So this color, the eye color is kind of like a periwinkle color with a little bit of aqua in there. It's just the colors I like to use. So that's where I came up with that. I originally thought maybe I'd base it off my own eye and then I decided I wasn't going to do that because I don't know, I didn't have the right colors of gel and be mixing and all sorts of other stuff. So I just skipped that. So now I'm going to be shading in. I added the pupil and then I'm going to shade in just right above the, like the very top of the eye with some black too. And now I'm going to be encasing the, just this eye part with some clear gel just to smooth it over and make it, that's going to really give it that depth that eyes have, which is really going to add so much realism just in that thin little layer of gel that you're adding. So now I'm going to be using a beige color and going around and making the eyelids. So I'm gonna first do the top eyelid and then I flash cured it. So I did one eyelid at a time so that the gel wouldn't run and possibly go over the eye that I have just spent so much time making so perfect. So I'm just gonna go through and do the top eyelid and then just very carefully go around it and try to make it a little thicker where it's next to the eye and thin it out as you reach the edges of the nail, if that makes sense. So that it looks like it does have like a little bit of a thickness right 
at where the where it meets the eye so now i flashed to the top and i'm gonna go through and repeat the process with the bottom with more of that beige color so i did kind of try to go with my skin tone and this is so my eyes appear to be different colors frequently i know every once in a while one of my nephews he was looking at my eyes he goes wow they look really blue today which is so weird because usually they're very green um sometimes they look brown so you know it could be my eye on a day when my eyes are feeling kind of more on the blue side so i'm just gonna have another little layer right along where the eyelids touch the eye so just add a little bit more just to thicken that area up and then cure that once again and if you do have issues where it goes onto the eye before you cure it you can clean that up with a clean brush with some isopropyl on it and you can get rid of any gel but once again before it's cured once it's cured you're pretty much stuck with what you got but you can do all kinds of adjusting prior to that which is another benefit of using gel is that you have this huge range of time to work with it so I'm going to do the same for the other. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to take some a darker shade of brown and I'm going to start shading in where the fold in the eyelid would be. So I'm just going to do a little bit on there and just darken it up a little bit here and there as well. If you wanted to give your eye some eyeshadow or some eyeliner, you could definitely add that if you like. I wanted to keep it relatively natural. So then I'm going to go through and just right along where the lash line would be, darken that up with some brown and blend that out so it's not like this brown line like eyeliner but just like a little shadow and then i'm going to be adding that little bit of skin that's in the corner of your eye as well as adding the waterline with a really gorgeous peachy pink and highlighting the waterline with a little bit of white too and then shading down below with some of that brown and as you're doing this anytime you feel that you need to flash cure go ahead and do that don't wait too long and have things run and get messed up just do things as you need to. And so I'm gonna add just a little bit more of like a darker berry color to the corner of the eye, and then a little white highlight as well to really make it look shiny, and then a little bit more white highlight to the waterline. And so then using a false eyelash, just one of them, I'm going to first struggle to get it off of the little tray that it came on. And I really wanted to not spend too much on the false eyelashes, so I went to a 99 cent store, and I wanted to find a pair that looked natural. I pretty much decided that I could either get a pair that looked natural or I could get a pair that was inexpensive. And I ended up deciding to go with inexpensive. So as you can see, they are a little long and they don't really have like the natural curvature and I don't know, they don't look super natural. So that is unfortunate, but you have your choice there. So choose what you want to do, but I would definitely use a pair that was new that I want to accentuate there so i'm going to lay them on there and use my tweezers and then once i have them and i know how long they need to be i'm going to pull off that little bit and i'm going to cut off the excess off the edge and so just you can keep working with them again this is you have time here you don't have to rush this process so just get them in place and because they have a little bit of that liquid latex on the edge of them they're you can keep moving them around until you know you're happy with them plus there's a little bit of a tacky layer on your gel possibly depending on the gel that you're using so after you have them and you like the way that they are good angle they follow the curvature of the eyelid really well so then just go through with more of your original eyelid color and paint that over the edge this is going to mask some of that black thread that the eyelashes are attached to as well as really secure them in place and then cure that and then trim off um, the lashes from that bit that you cut off so trim them off that little thread piece and then you can use those as the little smaller pieces to attach for the lower lash line. And so you could actually have done this for all of the lashes. Bear in mind that this process is not easy. It These eyelashes fall off every once in a while. You have them all look nice and you pick up the nail and then they'll escape. It's very troubling. But just work with them and get them in place and spread them out. Use the tweezers. Take your time. Because you're, you're working with gel here, you don't have to rush. And... You can even place them individually going down the line. They do look so much better if you don't have them on that little thread like as the top does, but you can't get them as straight. They don't sit quite as right. So, I mean, you have, you have to pick which way. So for me, it worked really well to do the top lashes with the thread and just the way they came and then place the bottom ones individually because they would look so strange if you did the bottom lashes on the thread because it's so thick and so long that they don't look anywhere near natural so it looks a lot better this way if you ask me so you can just keep playing with them and then after you have them cure that and i would cure it fully not just flash cure it make sure that you have it cured once they're all in place and so then after you have that done you can take them out and you can you know i'm just going to keep adjusting them too as i go here but after you have them cured again 
and you have them out, just make sure that you add another layer of gel over the edges of them. It can even be clear just a little bit and I'm going, that's really gonna secure them in place so that they don't fall off. After I had that done, they were set. They were good to go and I wasn't worried. So now I'm going to be applying gel sealer over the background and over, so the eyelids, the eye, but avoiding the eyelashes at all costs. You don't really want to get any gel. You want to have them keep that flexibility and that hair type texture. And that is it. So I had so much fun doing this. Like I said, this is something I've wanted to do for a while, but just never got around to it. So I hope you like it. And I hope that, you know, you give it a try. And if you do, I would highly recommend using gel instead of acrylic. If you're familiar with my videos, you know that normally I try to stick with acrylic. I am venturing into the world of gel. And for this nail in particular, gel was definitely the way to go. So I hope you like that and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well.